Hi, everyone. Um, hello. Thank you for, hello. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Teddy Chastain, and I am the director in the Office of Annual Giving. I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to welcome each of you for this special edition reunion back to school class, Davidson Football, Class of 81 Retrospective. Before we get started, I wanna go over a few housekeeping or Zoom keeping items, if you will. First, all participants have been muted um, and they will remain muted throughout the event, including myself, sorry about that. Um, if you are comfortable and have not already changed your Zoom name to your first and last name, we ask that you do that now if you're comfortable doing that. Um, you can rename yourself by clicking the participants button at the bottom of the screen. Um, you will hover your mouse over your name and then click the more button. And you can also add your Davidson class here if you have one as well. The chat feature is available tonight. If you have questions during the presentation, please send them through the chat to the host. Um, our moderator will read and address them during the formal Q&A period. Please note the panelists will not be monitoring the chat, so please do not send questions directly to them during the event. We will do our best to answer as many questions as possible. For optimal viewing, we recommend hovering your mouse at the top of the Zoom screen and you will see view pop up. If you click on that and then select speaker view, uh, you will be able to see the panelists in the center of your screen. If you have a tech issue of any sort, feel free to send the chat to me. Again, my name is Teddy Chastain, or you can send it to Judith Rolls or Alex Shields as well. We are the staff on this call this evening. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the moderator of tonight's program, Eddie Nicholson, class of 1979. To say that Eddie has an interest in Davidson team sports would be an understatement. Eddie would tell you that at times his attention to Davidson sports has been interrupted by work as a casino dealer and then as a lawyer. He hopes to retire in the near future to spend even more time watching Davidson sports. And now over to Eddie. Thanks. Let's go ahead and roll. All right, well, welcome to this retrospective. It's the brainchild of Patrick Pope. He's the representative of the offensive line in this, uh, without whom Gifford and Algum would not have had their record-setting careers. They don't get very many highlights, so um, we'll show you one here. Keep your eye to the right of the running back and a little beyond him, and you'll see the Furman player get pancaked. There he goes. Patrick has had a long career in the Air Force that he's just now retiring from, included two tours of duty in Iraq, and also authorship of the protocol for the nuclear football. This is him with his Travis Bickle look four years after taxi driver. Gifford Piercy, two years before he arrived, the leading receiver for Davidson for the season had eight receptions. In the game you're watching, Gifford had 11 for 173 yards. This is against Lafayette in 1979. He was a great third down and fourth down possession receiver, but he was really known for being a deep threat, as you'll see here. He averaged 22.2 um, yards per catch one year and has the career record that stands to this day of over 19 yards per catch. This is my favorite play, late in the first half, 10 seconds to go. They fake running out the clock, throw deep. He out jumps the cornerback for the ball, spins away from the safety, and goes into the house, touchdown, five seconds left. And we all know if he'd been tackled, it would have been Mike Bass trying the short field. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> Alvin Atkinson was one of um, four running backs on the same 1978 team that ended up 10 years after they graduated as still four of the top five career leading rushers at Davidson. What distinguished him from his great teammate running backs was the ability to break plays, catching passes in the backfield. That's about 10 yards behind the line, and it turns into a pretty good game. Against Furman coming up, 
in the, the biggest game these guys ever played. Uh, he had 222 yards receiving, and 131 of them were after the catch. Look at that acceleration. Yeah, he had blockers, but he didn't need them. <laughs> Not that play, anyway. Mm. And that'll do it for the intros of our um, three lead panelists and what they did at Davidson. I thought I'd start us off um, by asking the guys about their initial contact with Davidson, um, how they were recruited, whether, for example, Gifford Piercy knew he was going to an offense that um, didn't throw the ball at all. Oh. Uh, I went to high school at Woodbury Forest. And the way I got to Woodbury Forest was through an organization called A Better Chance. Uh, they were a nonprofit organization with the goal of helping young people of color become well educated by attending high achieving prep school. I was selected to participate in that program, is how I got to Woodbury Forest. Uh, dean Edmund White, who was the Dean of Admissions at Davidson, reached out to see if I was interested in attending Davidson. And, uh, he knew me through his son, Locke, who graduated uh, ahead of me at Woodbury and also ahead of me uh, at Davidson. We had played basketball together. And I'd always uh, just put education first based on that program that I was in. And Davidson was a fine school. So as far as playing football, that was just, just a cherry on top of things. That's how I ended up at Davidson. Sounds like we kind of got lucky. Uh, Patrick? Well, I was uh, always interested in playing in a wing T offense, and that's what uh, got me to Davidson instead of Duke. Uh, Coach Colbert showed up at the house trying to get me to sign on the dotted line, and my dad listened and listened, and he said, uh, oh, that's all well and good, but I thought the uh, whole point of Davidson football was to teach young Southern gentlemen how to lose gracefully, which uh, that was the last time I let him speak to the coach because uh, we were going to turn that around. But uh, I showed up uh, at uh, summer camp the very first first uh, freshman year. And Coach Colbert is uh, helping me say goodbye to my dad as we move into the Wildcat Hilton under the now uh, torn down uh, visitor stands. And he throws an arm around my neck and we're waving goodbye to my dad. And, and as soon as my dad rounds the corner going up the hill, he puts a football in my stomach and says, uh, congratulations, you're going to be a center. And I thought I was going to be a guard like uh, Max McGee, Jerry Kramer, that kind of stuff in a wing T offense. And uh, Swim Peterson took about uh, three hours of practice to knock me into the backfield enough where I uh, was no longer a center and destined to be a uh, meat squad guy for a year before finally getting another shot at offensive guard. Alvin, how about you? Well, <clears throat> let's see. I think. I was uh, recruited by, it may have been Coach Roberts, who was on the trip. I think he was the defensive coach, but he may have been on his way to Florida. And uh, I heard they stopped in my hometown of Brunswick, Georgia, and saw that there were two high schools and um, went and asked the coach about, you know, players and um, sort of uh, saw uh, a couple of games from my senior year where I had like over 1,200 yards rushing and had, had a really good year. But um, hadn't really decided about which college to go to. And, and then uh, they told me about Davidson, never heard of Davidson uh, in South Georgia, you know. And, um, but they said, look, we'll fly you up there and you go to, <laughs> and I said, well, I had never been on an airplane before. So I said, let me get on up to Davidson. <laughs> and then, boy, uh, what a difference now. <laughs> but that's how I, I came and uh, sort of a, was meant to be. Hey, Kevin, how about you, bud? I think Kevin's muted, or I would guess he is. Okay, let's see if Kevin can get on board. There you go. I bet. Uh, I, was, um, I was actually pretty heavily recruited, and um, make a long recruiting story short, I was ready to go to the University of Purdue, or Purdue University in West Lafayette. Indiana. They had flown me up there and fed me lobster. It was in the middle of a snowstorm. But I, I really liked um, Purdue. Um, and the night before I was supposed to sign with Purdue, in fact, the coach had flown down that night and was going to sign me the next morning. It's like a Thursday morning. I honestly, I couldn't sleep all night. 
um, I had this, this uneasiness, and this is a true story, uneasiness in my gut saying, do not go to Purdue. You need to go to Davids. Do not go to Purdue. You need to go to Davids. And so when um, the coach got there, he called me from the Fort Lauderdale International Airport, asked me for directions to my high school. And I said, coach, I'm sorry, but I can't come. I'm not coming. Um, called Coach Roberts up, same guy who recruited Alvin, and uh, told me, yeah, and it was a, he let out a hoop that would, oh, Charlie Daniels, that'll curl your hair. Um, and that's how I ended up there. I, I uh, turned down Purdue and Florida and a couple other places because Davidson was the right place. And it turns out to be one of the best decisions I'd ever made in my life. I'd say that to you guys. I'd say it to a bunch of strangers. That really was one of the best decisions I ever made. Well, um, because you weren't one of the three guys in the, in the beginning, I can tell you that um, had I been able to put some film on it, I've got some interceptions by you. And you will see them when the finished uh, product comes up. And I couldn't help but notice as I was going through the games that um, your absence from various games due to injury seemed to have a coincidental effect on us getting bombed. <laughs> and, uh, so I know you were a valuable player, and I'm glad you decided to play with these guys instead of Keena Turner at Purdue. Right. Yeah, I am too. It, it's been rewarding. I'll tell you what, before we impact uh, recruiting any further at Davidson, uh, why don't we kick it over to Coach? And uh, yep. I know he's got to run for a call here shortly. Yeah, I, I think everyone knows who Coach is. He's the person that Davidson invented the line for about needing no introduction. Um, I will keep it to Davidson had won one of its last 41 conference games before he came. And in his second year, he set Davidson's record for Division I victories in a season, and in the third, climbed the mountain, knocked off conference bully San Diego to end their 39-game winning streak. And for those of you who didn't watch the other games besides San Diego, he got to 3-0, and winning three white knuckles where somebody had to make a big play, and it was Davidson every time. Coach, we couldn't be happier to have you. We're glad you're still here. We hope you stay forever. Thanks, Eddie. Oh, man, what, what a great introduction. Really appreciate those kind words. And uh, love love watching the old footage. I mean, let's go run the rock. Get get us in a straight tee. You know, break the tee. Get your wide receivers in a three-point stance. Man, uh, yeah. Sorry, Gifford. Sorry about that, right? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> But uh, you certainly look good out there doing it. Uh, but what an honor to be asked to be a, a part of y'all's 40th reunion. You know, uh, your your generation uh, of Wildcat football has been so instrumental in the history of the program um, to uh, not just your time here and the legacy you left, but the, the generosity and support that your group has given throughout the years has really made it possible for, for where we are today. And, and you know, the, the opportunity for you guys to come together is really what this is all about, right? You know, we the game of football has changed quite a bit. I think we would all admit, right, uh, over the last 40 years, right? As I just spoke about wide receivers being in three-point stance. We we don't really see that anymore. Um, you know, we don't see that straight-footed straight, straight uh, footed kicker anymore, right? We don't see the club on somebody's foot kicking it straight anymore, okay? Okay. Uh, we can fair catch a kickoff now. Uh, you know, somebody can get kicked out of a game for spearing. Uh, we call targeting now. So a, a lot has changed, okay? But what hadn't changed is the brotherhood that football creates. And, and you know, you guys are the greatest example of that. And I, I'm just honored that you, you've you allowed me to come on tonight, uh, to say a few words, and to thank you on behalf of not just Davidson football, myself, our, our program and, and all the Wildcats that you've impacted over the years, because there, there are too many to name. You know, when, when I think about uh, your generation, your class, this era of football and how they've helped change the program, you know, it, it's helped push us back to division one football. You know that it's allowed us to, to hire division one staff and maintain a division one staff. It's allowed us to recruit across the country, become this, national footprint 
for those of you that pay attention a little bit to our social media and some of our promotional stuff we put out, we talk about being a national program. You know, your generosity, your, your era, more than any other Wildcat era, and I mean that, has allowed us and given us those opportunities. And I'm so incredibly grateful, you know, um, and, and I'm honored to, to be a part of this tonight. You know, uh, as we talk about football and the brotherhood it creates and, and how we have come together as a big football family, right? Uh, I hope that you will enjoy each other tonight. You'll enjoy this time together. But I also hope you'll, you'll talk about the history of Davidson football, what it's meant for you. I hope you will talk about Davidson football now and how you are connected. And what I hope and pray is that, I mean, we can honor you guys correctly in person at a home football game. You know, uh, you're a group that should be honored in person, the, you know, celebrating your 40 years. And the good Lord willing, we're, we're, we're going to have really excited home crowds. I know this fall uh, and, and hopefully you guys as a collective group can be there. You know, uh, as I reflect on so many things that this sport has given me, right. Um, I, I, I can't, I, I, I immediately stop and I think about the people. Okay. You know, we, we think about touchdowns and right. We think about tackles and, and, and we think about uh, records that many of you broke that stand to today. Okay. But the, the thing that comes first to mind are the people. Right. And, and I, I think about this this spring and, and and you know looking at Patrick Pope and and I know what he battled this spring and and I, I was involved in, in in some conversations and with Patrick right and some some Zoom meetings and praying for him and the brotherhood was praying for him as well and uh, you know that is what this is about you know and people who really don't I think understand football just don't understand that right that day in and day out you lined up beside each other. Man to your right, man to your left, man in front of you, man behind you, and you relied on each other for each other's safety, well-being, right? And today you're still doing that. And I just think it's remarkable. I really do. And, and I'm so grateful to be a part of this Davidson football family. So I'm excited about the future. I, I think that if you if you listen to me talk and you see some of my interviews, I hope you feel that. Uh, Davidson football, I, I think we're just getting started. I really do. You know, what, what, a, what a great – First three years we've had, I feel very blessed to, to have been a part of this, but I know the best is yet to come. We we have some great young men here. We have a great family, and, I, and if you haven't gotten to know some of our guys, I, I hope you will get to know them. They represent you. They represent Davidson College. They represent Wildcat football as well and as good as you could have ever hoped, and that is what I'm most proud of, the men that, that we are continuing to develop here on and off the field. And, and sending them in to be great leaders in our community. Yeah. So, guys, I, I enjoy this tonight. I, I got a few minutes. I'm going to jump on a – I got a 7.30 uh, recruiting Zoom, all right? It, we're kind of playing catch-up. What a great thing that we're – you know, we kept playing this spring and had had an extra week. Uh, uh, but uh, I do have just a couple minutes. I know you're muted, but I, I don't know if there's a possibility for just a really quick Q&A before we jump off. But I'd love to offer that opportunity. Hey coach, I got one question for you. How did uh, how did the uh, the class of '81 impact the way we raise funds for the Davidson Athletic Foundation? Well, it's you know the the, the class of '81 has been as generous as any class we've ever had, right? You know uh, they are cons you guys are consistently uh, our top donors. You, as a class, you've rallied together and. Uh, for our gridiron club, which, you know, you guys all know about um, how impactful and important that is, right? It, we can't do this without it. And so you you all being our most generous group, we can't do this without you. We, we can't hire the, the, the staff we've hired and keep them here, uh, you know, upgrade our equipment, upgrade our schedule, right? You know, um, the ability to, to, you know, not just host home games that we think we can win lower levels. You saw us challenging ourselves, right? We're opening up at VMI next year. That's not because VMI is giving us a big payday. It's because I want that opportunity to challenge ourselves so we're better prepared when we go into conference play. You know, you guys have all been a part of that. And, and you know, I, I hope you will continue to be a part of that, our Gridiron Club, and help us take those next steps forward. Thanks, Coach. Uh, you have Kevin. 
how many how many starters do you have coming back from last year to next year? Yeah, real, real good coach. We returned eight starters on offense, and we returned nine on defense. So 17 overall. Real excited. Yeah, I think for for us probably the more most nor we we. We graduate our battery, right? I, I speak in a baseball lingo there. So we graduate our, our center and our quarterback, right? So that that is certainly uh, uh, leaves you a little anxious, but uh, I know the guys that that are are really prepared. The the, the guys that are coming in fighting for those jobs, and we're excited about those those, those people getting opportunity. I have one question, and that is um, the backup quarterback who was very good, just the Phelps was spectacular. Um, I had heard somewhere where he might have another year of eligibility. Is he coming back? He he is coming back. So so Lewis Colosimo has been our backup quarterback for now three seasons, um, and has played in quite a few games. If you've watched us, very talented young man. To be honest, I you know Eddie's right. He when he gets in, he actually does some electrical stuff that you get really wild about. Um, so he he has decided to come back for a fifth year. We're excited about that. So he decided he was going to double major, and he will graduate in December. We're very grateful for that. You know, that doesn't happen around here very often, as you know. So the opportunity for, for Lewis to do that was, was really, really nice for us, and we're excited for that. Uh, when someone graduates in, in um, December, you know, that you could work five football years into that and four and a half years of school. Uh, is that something that's contemplated, the, the possibility of redshirting people, or is that way too far in the future to even think about right now? Well, I, no, Eddie, I don't think it's too far in the future. I mean, we've actually done it a handful of times, right? Um, so since I got here, we've tried to be creative with some of those opportunities. So Khalil Shaw, I don't know if you remember Khalil. He was one of our, our <laughs> slot backs in our option game. Uh, Khalil was a redshirt senior in 2019. Um, and what we were able to do is uh, work out uh, – an internship for him um, in spring of his first senior year. So, cause he was done with his classes. And so he, he took the semester off to come back in the fall. So you have to be creative, but we're finding ways to make it happen. I don't think we'll ever be that program that has 10 red shirts, seniors run around. Right. I just don't think that's ever going to happen, but the opportunity to, to have one or two or three a year, I think is definitely um, something that's uh, trending for us. And, I think you'll see a little bit more of it moving forward. Uh, and yet another, it looked like last year a, an abnormally large number of recruits came from Texas and California, some pretty talent-rich states. And I'd heard maybe you were targeting Florida now. Is that true? It, it is true. I mean, I, I think you, you guys all understand what kind of academic institution we are, right? And so, we're, you know, we're nationally known uh, – college across the country and so we should be recruiting football wise that way and that's really one of the major changes we made when we got here and, and our number one state coming in in this class is from california and really excited about the talent level um you know they don't have a ton of options out there at our level at the fcs level and so if they're going to really leave for an fcs program of high academics they're probably going to have to come to the east coast so, so why not us right and Texas has really been something that's been big for us probably for quite some years. Florida, we're, we're really going to make a push to try to get some better inroads in Florida over the next year. Tyler Phelps is from Florida. Louis Cosimo is from Florida. We've had some really good players. We're just going to try to do even better. I know your time's limited. Anybody else real quick? Guys, I, I, I so appreciate the opportunity to come on. My, you know, for so, some of you have had quite a few conversations. I'll look around the names here. Um, and others, you, you maybe you're seeing me for the first time. But um, I hope you will take an opportunity to get to campus. Come see us. My door is always open. My phone is always open. I, I truly feel lucky every day to walk in to my office as a head football coach at Davidson. I, I'm grateful. I love it here. We are very blessed with the type of students and scholar athletes we have. Thank you for everything you do for us. Um, and if I can ever do anything in return for you guys, please don't hesitate to ask. Have a great day, guys. Go Cats. Go Cats. Go Cats. Thanks, Coach. Uh, I think you can see um, part of why he's been so successful, um, just the way he speaks to 
everyone, really. Uh, I was going to ask him what he would have thought in terms of having, you know, some of you guys on his team, but I think I'd rather ask you how much you would have liked playing for um, Scott. I mean, wow. I, I would really like to have played with him. Uh, just his motivation. Uh, he would have me uh, actually go into the weight room and <laughs> Rocky and all those things I used to hate to do. Wow. <laughs> you might have won 10 games. <laughs> I did everything I could not to lift the weight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Frank. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I would say that uh, his offensive, you know, being an offensive player uh, under him is just remarkable, uh, you know, so. Alvin, I can tell you where you'd have been lining up. You'd have been right behind the right tackle in that little wing type position. If yeah. you've seen any of the plays on this team, that's where you would have been. Okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, Gifford, you'd have been the lone wide receiver, but uh, like that's something new for you. And um, <laughs> you would have enjoyed getting behind people. I mean, everything about it. Um, and then, you know, Patrick, you wouldn't have minded moving beyond the linemen to um, go whack some smaller guys, which is what they do. They sneak their linemen, you know. That was my goal. And, yeah, well, you know. I hit the big boys up front when you can go find the cornerback. But, uh, you know, Kevin would have been a quarterback like he was supposed to be for Davidson. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, you'd have been running this triple option. Boy, you'd have hated that, wouldn't you? Um, and if you were a D-back, they're recruiting now for speed first, speed second, and speed third. And, you, know, you were okay with that. Well, there were a lot of guys that were recruited for one position and wound up being put into another one. I mean, Kevin's a pretty good example. Recruited as a quarterback, put at cornerback. Um, you know, Admire Bailey was showed up to be a, a fullback and wound up being a, a linebacker and then a nose guard. Uh, I can think of a couple other guys off the top of my head, but uh, I guess what they did was recruited athletes and students and then put them wherever the heck they wanted as soon as they got on campus and <laughs> their ride away was gone. Yeah, and, and my guess, yeah, my guess is that that was the kind of thing they weren't telling you beforehand. Uh, Gary Joe Stokes started out as a running back. <laughs> and I bet none of you guys knew that. <laughs> Didn't Terrell Rye also get that way for a previous class? I thought he was supposed to be. I, I believe that's true, and I think he's on the call, so I would hope he would send us a message to confirm, but I think that's true. Um, Porter, Dr. Porter also started as a, uh, as a quarterback, option quarterback. Uh, yeah, and I think he ended as a really good baseball player, didn't he? <laughs> he had right. a pretty good I mean, baseball. he was one of the stars, yeah. wasn't he, on the baseball team? Yep. Yeah, got into the Davidson Hall of Fame via baseball. Yeah, well, you know, the Hall of Fame is probably a pretty good place to end up. Yeah. Um, I, I'm shifting a little away from the um, blistering success of this to um, a different topic. Um, you know, obviously we know that um, Patrick was in the military and was serving the country in that way. Uh, the other three of you um, have jobs that are sort of in a – reasonably similar um, type field and at least interest there. And um, Alvin is currently the community engagement lead and associate director for the Center uh, for the Study of Economic Mobility at uh, Winston-Salem State. And GIF is the operations supervisor of DSV Solutions in Richmond. And Kevin is the uh, president and CEO of Conyers Rockdale Georgia Economic Development Corporation. So you guys have got um, some service of your own to community, um, at least in two of the three and maybe all three to some extent. And you were really the groundbreakers on diversity on campus. Um, I think we've heard before that you know, at the time you were here at school, the, you know, as they called it then, just minority representation was pretty much the football team. I mean, that yeah. that was it. That's how the school got started on getting right on that, uh, just as, you know, the classes in the early to mid-70s for women had to be pioneers. Yeah, and um, let, me, let me share this story about 
that's a good point because if if you are African American coming to Davidson College, at least from our class, you had the opportunity to hang out with uh, Philip Gilbert and Virgil Flood, and I know Virg is on here, and Craig Powell's, and they were really the representatives of the of the black students who were football players and. Of course, Philip, being from Miami, uh, Liberty City <laughs> Lodge had this big personality and just uh, sort of dominated. And Virgil, being shorter and but and talking fast, being from South Carolina, the low country. And but these were the two. And of course, uh, what I heard was the coaches would give them uh, a few dollars and they'd get access to the van and and and. Uh, so to show us, hey, it's good to be a black student at Davidson College. Uh, but then at night, we would have to go to the uh, other the side of the Richardson Stadium and sleep in cots under the, uh, under the stadium. But that's the experience of uh, being recruited uh, from Davidson. But we did come, and as, as we all are, are saying, it's been the right decision for us uh, over these years. And, uh, to stay connected and to come back. But uh, definitely uh, that football uh, group, and I know with uh, James Jones and McLean coming after us, all those Andre. Uh, really did uh, have a nucleus that really could carry others into this. And um, we, we, we survived, you know, we, <laughs> it was football and surviving in the classroom, like I said, and uh, that combination really uh, helped us today. Well, the well, survival in the classroom was pretty generally spread about. Yeah. Uh, that's that's right. The diversity of the football team is one of the richest experiences of my life at Davidson, that's for sure. Well, I had the experience of driving Phil Gilbert's car from uh, Davidson to the Furman game, uh, the one that wasn't as close as the one I showed film of, uh, because it was just before Thanksgiving and people were going to get to leave um, however they wanted to. So I drove his car down there and then rode the bus back and then he had it so he could go somewhere. And I had never driven a car that looked like that. And it was a real experience. I had to turn the wheel like a quarter turn before it started to turn the car. And it was really cool. And I got pulled over by a cop. And um, <laughs> he was very surprised when I rolled the window down. <laughs> I, um, I grew up in South Florida and uh, for the first couple of years when Philip and Craig were still on the team, Philip and Craig were in Miami. I was in a place called Hollywood. They drive to Hollywood and pick me up the first year. I don't know if you guys remember Greg Cannon. Yes, Greg was Greg a, Cannon. a, a yes. really, really good running back. Mm -hmm. um, I think one was maybe from Satellite Beach, somewhere along the coast. Anyway, we the three of us drove and we picked up Greg Cannon and we drove from there to the campus. That was a 1974 Camaro. <laughs> Four guys in a 1974 Camaro with the luggage <laughs> stacked on top of the roof of the Camaro. <laughs> and on, you know, and then the, the little, you know, the trunk wasn't much bigger than three by three or something like that. But can you imagine four football players stuffed into a 1974 Camaro? driving the 12 hours from Miami, because back then the speed limit was 60. So it took us 12 hours to get from Miami to Davids. I had completely forgotten about that, Eddie, until you just mentioned Phillip's car. I, I've still never driven a car that was as fun to drive as that one. <laughs> There's a, um, oh, well, let's go ahead and do it. Tell, tell me about uh, Ed Farrell. No. <laughs> Did you say no? <laughs> <laughs> if only Swen was here. For this. Um, I have one to say about that. Okay. okay. Coach Farrell, he had all the weapons that any coach could ever want. Uh, he just didn't understand how to put it together or to turn us loose, so to speak. I mean, we could score anywhere on the field. Uh, and I think that, you know, that discouraged a lot of us also because, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we knew what we were able to accomplish, but we really never got the chance to, to do it. And, uh, you know, I think back on that and I 
know it's a difficult thing to say, but, you know, in the long run, I think it, it made me stronger because, you know, when I looked around at my teammates and you know, understood what they had gone through before I even got there. And I think we made it a little bit better for everybody. So that's the positive that I take away from that. Yeah, I, I, my, and, and, and interesting, Pat uh, asked me about uh, Coach Farrell and his, the naming of captains. And, and when I was reflecting upon it, uh, he didn't, I didn't really talk much to Coach Farrell. I really didn't have much to say, and he didn't say much to me. Um, it was really the position coach that did more, than, and for most of the, the time it was Coach Colbert. But, and, and, and so I really didn't, don't know who he had a close relationship with to uh, actually um, have influence. The, I, I will say this, though. The, the, the best thing he did <laughs> was really when he did, had the bonfire <laughs> at the end of the season and had us write down our regrets <laughs> and, and burn them up. <laughs> that was the best thing that he could have done for me because, <laughs> uh, you know, it was gone, you know, senior year, injury and all. But And so it was a way to move forward. But I don't really no I mean I never did like the wing tee uh in fact uh, after uh, my sophomore year I went in to coach and I told him look they had me at the at the uh, the right half back I said look I, I run better going to the right I need to move to the left and um, you know they said they humored me at that time but interesting uh with the Furman game what happened was they told us we could go line up anywhere we want to on the field as long as we got back to the place we needed to be to start to play. And so, man, we were just going all over the place, lining up, having so much fun, uh, even though, you know, the game we, we didn't win, but it was like it was like the best game just to – it's almost like playing Sandlot. Uh, you know, we, it, was, it was like, man, you know, and, and but – but that was Coach Colbert. That wasn't Coach Farrell. <laughs> so yeah. that was the difference. So anyway. Well, I'll tell you what, they did put together a, a good bit of talent. I got to agree with Giff on that. I mean, I, I wanted to tell you that uh, I was really honored to play between Dave Donaldson and Danny Kleinar. Unfortunately, Danny's no longer with us. And I wish uh, Dave had, had dialed in. But Dave Donaldson, I think, was one of the most underrated athletes to ever play at Davidson. He did some amazing things. Uh, athletically to get past the front tier and get to the linebackers and make things a lot easier for guys like me. Uh, I was just honored to play between those two guys. And uh, I think uh, together, especially that uh, our junior year, we, uh, we showed what some of that, uh, that skill up front could do in making some, uh, some opportunities available for the skill players. I, I got to say, I, I, watching that Furman game, you know, I, I was out in Nevada when that happened, and I finally got a hold of the film, and I don't remember who got it to me. It could have been Al Ryan, who I Thank hope, you, think is on this call. Yeah. And um, he had over 300 yards passing in that game and you know, dropped a dime on you, Al, in midfield on that 83-yard touchdown pass you know, while getting hit. Uh, but that Furman game, to watch that, I mean, I can't believe we didn't win. You guys ran wild in that game. And when this history of the program movie gets finished up this summer, that Furman game is going to eat up a lot of your period. Um, well, it's a team sport, so you win as a team, and, and uh, sometimes you don't as a team. So well, we'll, we'll put defensive highlights on some different games. Um, <laughs> 1980 Bucknell, 1979 Lafayette, when they bailed you guys out. Um, we'll we'll put those on. But uh, that Furman game was just crazy. Um, didn't, they, didn't they, this time, Trey, didn't they blow a play dead that, that uh, L. Ryan had, had a fake and uh, it looked like it was going to be a touchdown and they, they uh, blew the play dead? I can't remember but exactly, but yeah. it seems like we lost a touchdown on that one. And, uh, I mean – what was it, Ed Farrell, that said that 55 points should have been enough? At least that's what he thought when they quoted him in Sports <laughs> Illustrated. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, you know, if I'm the head coach, who am I indicting when I say that? You know, maybe myself, right? Mm. <laughs> um, I, I've seen the play that uh, Tom mentioned. Uh, it's in the film I have, and I don't know what was going on with that. The first time I watched it, I said, like, oh, man, we're about to score here. And then, you know, the play had been whistled dead, and it's hard for me to tell whether 
it was going to go so well because Herman stopped or, you know, with a whistle or whether it was going to go. That was a touchdown. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, so, hey, everybody, it's Al. And it, it is absolutely, it's great to see some of these superstar legends from the past. You, you, everybody looks great. And uh, Patrick, I'm glad you're doing well. And Eddie, your uh, contributions to restoring the history, if it, if it uh, weren't for you, um, obviously a lot of things would have been lost. Uh, and Alvin, I know your your work in Winston Salem has has been very well received. I think I bumped into you at Haynes Track about twenty years ago, and you still have your your A game. I watched you running around the track and went, "Oh my gosh, that's that's still Alvin." Yeah, Giff, that was twenty look, years ago, right? Yeah, it was twenty years ago. You, you had it. You had it back then. And Giff, uh, I, I share your empathy or your. Uh, sentiments about the weight room i think you tried to avoid it we probably hit out together <laughs> and i know right. virgil virgil's on the call i hope he's on the call and i've kept up with virgil through the years and what what outstanding work he's done and kevin uh it was at, in business school when i was at, in med school there and we played on the flicker ball team that uh had a crazy amount of talent and we still lost to a bunch of lawyers that that outsmarted us and then uh, Tom Trey, he is just knocking the top out these days and, and no vaunt. But um, relative to that, that Furman game, that one play, um, the coach, uh, it was uh, Jim uh, Colbert had, had designed it and he'd gotten the refs and he told him that if we get to a fourth and one, that we're going to fake a dive up the middle. Uh, and the fullback, which was Ray Sinclair, was supposed to go straight up in the air and we're just going to hold the ball back, and Gifford was going to take off down the sideline, and don't blow it dead, don't blow it dead. So, we sure enough, it was fourth and one. We uh, Ray sold the fake too well. The refs call it dead, and I'm standing there with the <laughs> with the football, and Gifford is wide open in the uh, in the end zone or on the sidelines. It was that should have been another touchdown, and uh, and I, and. Uh, Farrell just called off the offense during that game. It was five straight touchdowns. We had 35 points, and Alvin was running wild out there. Nobody could tackle anybody. And he just decided to shut the offense down. But I agree with you guys. We had a crazy, crazy amount of talent. Not, uh, I mean, the offensive talent that was there, the line, the coordination, it, it could have scored. And I think at one point, it was the top two or three offense in the country from, uh, uh, and we didn't even throw the ball, <laughs> which was the crazy thing about it. We, just a lot of talent. And it, I will thank Tom Trey. He'll probably admit this and Eddie will too. You, the class of 81, you guys were special. Y'all, y'all brought a level of talent that, uh, that we didn't have. And y'all were amazing. Just a good group of people, great, great friends and humans, but crazy athleticism to that team. Yeah, we also had Pat Sheridan too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't well, go without Pat Sheridan. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you amazing oh man. Gosh. Amazing man. Yeah. Yeah. A lot we, of chemistry. We were mentored by a pretty good class of uh, folks in front of us, and we handed it off to a pretty good class with uh, Bezos and Whitmire and uh, a whole bunch of guys wound up going back and beating the pants off of Boston University after they thrumped us. Uh, up in uh, Boston our, our uh, senior year. But, uh, you know, there, it's just a matter of continuing the, the, uh, the positive uh, upticks along the, the way for the program. And, uh, Al, you were a big part of that, too. And, and Tom, there's a lot, a lot of people there. Pat, yeah, but you guys, 81, you are special. Uh, you're, you're the legendary class in my, <laughs> my perspective. <laughs> you guys actually may be the, the – for the the one class that didn't have a losing record in like 30 years. Davidson. Well, let, let me go ahead and let you know this. Uh, you're very close. It's 40 <laughs> years, the class of 60 through the class of 99, and two don't have losing records. Class of 81, the class of 82. Wow. Whoa, and that's okay, it. 69? 69, not a winning record. Um, now, um, they, they went four and five, then three and six, then seven and four. So they're one under 500 as um, varsity guys. Remember, they couldn't play as freshmen. But if you take the year before 66, they're, they're under 500. So they don't make it. 
Uh, nobody makes it, but the class of 81 or the class of 82, you know, it's numbers. You can trust me on those. Um, let me also say that uh, Kevin got hurt, I think, in the Furman game, right? Um, no, actually, it was in the Boston University. Game. Oh, I meant like before the Furman game got played, um, the, the high scoring when you got hurt, right? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're trying to excuse you from the defensive uh, <laughs> side of the ledge. Didn't they rush for like 600 yards or something in that game? I forgot what it was, but it was that we oh, were. There are certain and they numbers I don't like to remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they had some yards rushing, but you know, we had a lot of yards too. Um, and I tell you, you, if you guys haven't gone to games with Coach Abel uh, running the show here, we played San Diego his first year. We had four running backs, each run for 150 or more yards in the game. Four. Against the best team in the league. I mean, if you haven't watched this team live, you got to get out to a game now that you know, maybe we can start going to them again. Hey, Eddie, uh, you know, we can open up the floor for some questions, uh, but I didn't know if you wanted to go ahead and throw the film on uh, and we can talk over the film or, or what you wanted to do with it. Yeah, it's um, six minutes long. Um, yeah, um, I because I know what play's coming up, you know, I'll kind of cue you in on it. And, um, yeah, Teddy, can you run it? Or... or Yes, I believe I believe we can get that. Or up. Alex, one of the two of you. Uh, it's like number two, and it's got all these Furman plays we've been talking about on it. Now I didn't put the one where the whistle blew, but the other. Adam, I, can you hear me? Yes. Who is I can't. This is Mitch. This is Mitch. I got a question. <laughs> uh -oh. I got a question for Alvin. What's up? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's up? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Hey, I got a question for Alvin regarding the Furman game. Yes. I want to know what his reaction was when Pat Sheridan started a fight at the coin toss. <laughs> well, you know, Pat, uh, he used some kind of language, you know, <laughs> that um, the uh, other opponents didn't really appreciate. Uh, but he was in a different zone, Pat. All games, he was. He really didn't want to be close to him, but uh, you know that he just started that game that way. You know, I, I on the sideline, you know, not wearing pads, I stayed away from Pat and Swim. Yes, <laughs> <Poor> man. <laughs> There's a lot of people who do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would add that uh, we do have Dean Garvin on the line, and he could do some translation if you can remember what Pat said, Alvin. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, no, I don't remember what he said, but okay. uh, no. I, well, actually, we, we, would, it's, we don't need to use that language on this. Oh, it was right. that. Yeah. Here's where, um, this is 1978. You guys are part of the first team that, doesn't have a losing record. There's Paige Wally getting a big gain. He was the leading rusher uh, career at the time. Uh, but he got run down from behind, and Gifford will not. Watch this. Touchdown. So that's that was the biggest win, really, of the five, I thought, and uh, that and Lafayette to give a 500 season. And then the next year, against Lafayette is when Gifford runs wild, um, gets the 173 yards receiving. But we kind of had trouble finishing off drives. We relied on the defense in this game. This is an interception by Kevin. Film's horrible, but he's going to come down the sideline, and it looks like maybe at the end of it he might be gassed. Go, Kevin. <laughs> Go, Kevin. Go, Kevin. Oh. I, I got to stop you. That was the most tired I'd ever been in a game in my life. Now, I, I, that's the one time I needed oxygen, and it wasn't there. This is the fourth down catch by Gifford Piercy that saves the day and sets up the winning score. Now, Ray Sinclair had fumbled on the previous drive, and the defense held. 
And apparently Farrell lost faith because it was three straight carries by Alvin, even though that was Rake Sinclair territory. And I'm drawing conclusions. This is the touchdown that wins the game. This puts Davidson in a place where it got ranked in the top 10 in one double A and leads up. And of course, you know, Gifford's big game leads up to the big Furman standoff. And man, some plays are coming here. Um, defense gets a couple of turnovers early. People forget it because of all the scores later. And that really triggered you guys running wild. You know, Furman got stopped by having the ball jar. This is Alvin's first of four touchdowns. Al puts the, look at Al. He's getting hit and he gets the pass off. I, the thing skipped a little there, but it was a leaping catch. And as you can see, everybody's pretty excited. Ray Sinclair is going to do his thing here. I'm not sure why it's in slow motion, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, and now it's skipping around, so I'm not sure what's going wrong, um, Teddy. You know, Teddy went to Furman. She might be messing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so Judith is running our video right now. It, it may just be some glitches from it translating to. Okay. If it's going to be like this, I wonder if we shouldn't um, get back there by telling stories because this isn't, you know, this is skipping a little. I'll go ahead and let it run. I will. <laughs> Whatever. Well, I mean, when this you miss the play, you miss the play. I think, you know. The, the, the one play from that game that we're – oh, this is where Craig Powell's breaks some ankles. Breaks loose. Well, he cuts back and two Furman guys, like, you know, hobble off the field with broken ankles. Um, there's a flag, but it's not off. Um, Andre gets his moment with a kickoff <laughs> return. Keep your eye on number 82, Joe Palasak as well. Another yeah, one he, of the guys that he clears it out on the block. And um, Kevin, if you thought you were tired at the end of your run, it appears that Andre had to be picked up. <laughs> <laughs> and it wouldn't be a Davidson game without a long pass to Gifford. That I know Gifford went out of bounds on that play, but you know, I'm sure he'll say he didn't. Oh no. Uh, I think it's bad <laughs> angle. Bad camera uh, angle. This is this is Al under serious duress, hitting you in stride. Although the film looks like it's going to skip here. What a great pass! Yeah, nice ball. And you know, and Alan does it. Um, kick it at the fifty-yard game. He makes it eighty-three. Extra points, good, and it's forty-nine apiece. Down 56-49. Alvin takes it in for touchdown number four behind you guys. That's the and, famous play um, for you, Pat. That yeah. basically marks the high water mark of Farrell's era. We go for two, playing to maybe go to the one double A playoffs, but the two point conversion doesn't work. I'll have and, it noted that that's my arm well above everybody's head, but you cropped me out of the picture. This is to show that 1980, everybody was hurt. Ray Sinclair just does Ray Sinclair here. Uh, that's right. And that's not clipping, by the way. <laughs> it never is. <laughs> and a little more Ray Sinclair. As you can see, the first guy doesn't seem to get it done. Now, the defense really sort of won this game. Here's them forcing a fumble. I know you offensive guys aren't going to agree, but um, I think uh, Andre is going to have another play here. Interception. The assistant coaches at the bottom are pleased. <laughs> Is that Mickey Dillon? It yep. sure is. He goes in for the lead. And now Kevin Hanna is going to bite on a fake. He's at the bottom of the screen where the white line is. He bites on the fake really bad, but the ball is slightly underthrown, and he's fast, and it's an intercept. Yeah, it skipped the, the four-foot um, jump I had to make in order to get the ball. <laughs> yeah. 
um, anyhow, it, it's a great recovery. And it, and um, at the time, I imagine you were one of the interception, career interception leaders, but I, I don't know that for sure because Davidson didn't track that very well at the time. I didn't get that many balls thrown at me. I mean, I'm not bragging, but it's the truth. There's I didn't see the ball that. much. You're bragging, Kevin. Well, Virgil you know, didn't okay. either. It's okay. I'll brag either. if it's true. Hannah, but though. Well, I mean, Patrick got to say it wasn't flipping. Seven. Hey, Roman. Um, well, that's we don't I'm have a lot of film of you because when you make a play, it's in the middle of the line and no one can see it. Uh, so um, we, we've talked about the skill players a lot. And we've talked about the offensive line, and you're here to uphold the honor of the defensive line. So have at it. Well, there's not a whole lot to say. Uh, in our system, the uh, defensive linemen, the – our job was basically to allow the, the linebackers to roam free and, uh, you know, clog up as many people as we could. Uh, my, my broad behind was able to cover two gaps. And then Mike Sheridan and Dylan on the other two sides primarily were able to hold their gaps. Our linebackers had uh, maneuver to roam. So uh, that, that was our point. So, you know, skill is in the eye of the beholder. We pick up space. Hey, I'll stick up a little bit for the defensive line there, uh, Sven. I, I happen to remember watching the Delaware game our sophomore year uh, from the sideline, and I was amazed at what you did to the Delaware center. He was on roller skates going backwards the entire game, and uh, their guards uh, pulled into your side more often than they got around the center. So you uh, did a pretty good job of destroying their scheme of, uh, of offensive uh, maneuver, that's for sure. And, and for the people watching – uh, Swin's one of the few guys who could got the chance to start for four years, right? Right. Yeah. And it, in fairness, my first year, people were going to get knee surgeries like uh, they were giving them away. I think we had three on the defensive line. Uh, so I knew I was going to play a lot, uh, but I remember getting the, uh, the nod the night before against Colgate. Uh, that was pretty special. But, yeah. Now, again, I had an extended time at Davidson, so my four years were over a period of five. And then we were lucky to have you. And, and it ties back to what um, Coach Abel was saying about, you know, getting people um, to be able to play a, a fifth season and graduate in December being something that they might do a little bit of, but apparently not a lot. Um, you know, my whole four years there, we didn't graduate a defensive lineman without knee surgery. The, the chop block was legal then. And so every one of us had knee surgeries. You, you know, the father of the chop block is the Davidson grad. Um, Alex Gibbs, uh, reviled by all NFL defensive linemen as the um, offensive line coach at with the Denver Broncos was a halfback at Davidson in the early sixties. I don't know if you guys knew that. Mike Sheridan and I went down the same year with knee surgeries. Swin was alluding to it. That was Dylan and Swin's freshman year. And it was all right before the first game in pre the end of preseason camp. And uh, changed a lot of things, of course, for everybody. But I'll say, most importantly, it's good to see all you guys. What a rogues gallery. Yes, yes. Oh, well, let, uh, let me say, too, I, I want to thank all the uh, other uh, football camaraderies for um, Conrad for showing up uh, to just celebrate a part of this uh, conversation, this class, because um, we really do see ourselves as bigger than just our class members, uh, our football team here. And, you know, since we overlap from – the late 70s and even into uh, that that 81, uh, 80 football year. So, and and some of even, as I look at the participant list, some of our uh, classmates who weren't on the football team, but were in the stands uh, over those four years. So I'm just glad that uh, everybody could be a part in, in, in uh, putting this together. So uh, down memory lane, 
but it's all about the present right now. So um, let's take shout care out. of ourselves. Absolutely. Shout out, to, shout out to Lisa Hasty, who was a shout cheerleader. Ah, uh, yes. Part of the team, too. <laughs> Indeed. Well, Coach Abel kind of summarized it fairly well. I mean, his guys and you guys, you know, a brotherhood. And it's through shared adversity as well as shared success that the bond grows strong. And, um, you know, anyone who got through and survived August, I mean, you know, you guys on the meat squad facing Swin, that couldn't have been a heck of a lot of fun. You weren't aristocrats like Alvin and Kevin getting to play with the starters for mm. right out to you. Well, as far as the, the brotherhood, it, it, it's, it's definitely yeah. weird com coming out of, particularly your freshman year, coming out of high school. I did not come from a great large school, so everyone played both ways, special teams and all that. And when you got down to Davidson, even though we were not a deep team, uh, we, we had an upper field and a lower field. I think they're gone now. Uh, and you didn't see the offense until the, the two came together. But as, as far as a team, I mean, there definitely was a brotherhood because we, we went through a lot. Uh, and uh, re regardless of where you played, I mean, these are the people that uh, you, you suffered with, you went through injuries with, you uh, took the heat, the humidity, uh, the, the physical strain, on top of all that fume stuff that everyone else had. Uh, so, and I, I consider taking humes once. Uh, so, I mean, it was definitely a challenge. And if anything, uh, I mean, looking at, you know, my teammates here, I mean, these are the people, if they needed a kidney, they, they have one. They just have to come up to Pennsylvania to get it. Uh, I might go halfway, maybe. But, uh, you know, it truly is a, a remarkable institution. And the people we met on that team, uh, you know, we could take up right where we left off and, uh, you know, get along famously. And to see so many of our classmates out of jail, I mean, that's pretty remarkable. <laughs> I think as an EMT, you could get as many kidneys as you wanted every night there, Sven. Well, it's messy, but yeah. <laughs> you want one? The last one about not being in jail, that's a good one. Uh, it might be about time that we uh, bring this to a close because we might get into some other stories. And, and we, we, know this, we don't really want to put that out there right now. Yeah, I, I, on advice to counsel, mm -hmm. you guys really. Alvin, before not. you put it to a close, <laughs> Um, I, I've been noticing that I think that, um, yeah. I think that uh, John Bezos and I may be the most uh, junior people on this call. Um, and I just want to tell you, I, I got my first start about halfway through y'all's uh, uh, senior season. And uh, I, I mean, y'all are like, like t today still like heroes in my eyes. I mean, you're, you're like total rock stars. And I just want to share that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank, That's you. Great thank yes. you. Thank, thanks, Roger. Um, it, anyone who's uh, just been watching and wants to either say something or ask a question, you can type it into the chat, um, and we'd be more than happy to address it. Well, we are at about a, an hour's mark, and uh, that's at, at some point uh, where it's going to wind up getting uh, edited down to for YouTube. But we're going to keep the windows open for as long as you guys would like and as long as Judith and, and Teddy will let us do it. Uh, but uh, what a fantastic gathering. Uh, I really appreciate so many people dialing in. Uh, so many guys, uh, Joe Shea, Wyatt Alston, uh, you know, John Porter, Dean Garvin, uh, guys that haven't said anything. Uh, we're going to stick around for a while, and, and please feel free to unmute yourselves and, and join in the fray. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be around for a while. Thank you all so much. Um, thank you, Eddie. Uh, thanks to Coach Abel, who I know is no longer on the call. Alvin, Giff, Kevin, Patrick, and others for taking time to speak with all of us this evening and leading us in this conversation. It was really fun to listen to. I want to extend a big thank you to the Class of 1981 Reunion Committee for sponsoring this event. Do note that this event was recorded and will be available on the website within the next few weeks. 
Finally, thanks to all of you for joining us this evening, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their night. Please feel free to unmute, say hello, ask questions. Um, we will leave this open for a few minutes, so enjoy. Thank you. Thanks, Teddy. Thanks, Judith. Hey, Teddy, Judith. I was so sure that um, 